A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit of infirmity that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he laid his hands on her, and immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days to be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each one of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When Jesus said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. She had grown accustomed to looking at feet. After 18 years bent down, she could recognize people by their bunions. Today we might say she had osteoporosis, but it could have been years of women's work, carrying water, scrubbing floors, washing feet. The text says she had a spirit of infirmity. Isn't it possible that she also had an infirmity of spirit? Oh, that wasn't her own doing. She could have coped with her physical condition. She'd done that for 18 years. But it was the way she was treated by others that caused this other infirmity, often more devastating than the first. It was the way people sometimes spoke over her back as though she wasn't even there, or walked away from her in the middle of a sentence, or kept their distance as though her condition might be contagious. It took more than a little gumption to even come to Sabbath services because she knew that some considered her condition to be God's punishment for some sin, either hers or her parents. Nancy Mares is a woman who knows something about such things. A gifted writer, she has lived for years with multiple sclerosis that gets worse year by year. In her book, Waist High in the World, she describes her vantage point from a wheelchair. The truth is, she says, that unless you are squatting or six years old, I can never look you straight in the eye. That's not so different from looking only at feet. Nancy Mares knows what it means to have an infirmity of spirit. She says, because of the soundness of the body so often serves as a metaphor for its moral health, the body's deterioration thus implies moral degeneracy. That puts me and my kind in a quandary. How can I possibly be good? Let's face it, wicked witches are not just ugly as sin. They're also bent and misshapen, crooked. I am bent and misshapen therefore ugly, therefore wicked, and I have no way to atone. I'm aware of things I say without thinking. Walk on your own two feet, self-reliance. Look me straight in the eye, honesty. We are often deaf to the cries of the poor, moral failure. It's not hard to imagine that after 18 years bent down, the woman had an infirmity of spirit. Did anybody ever bend down to look into her eyes? Did anyone think to say, can I get you anything from the market? Or would you like to walk to the synagogue with me? Did anybody ever touch her? The text doesn't tell us such things. We don't even know her name. We only know that she appeared in the synagogue as Jesus was teaching. She didn't go to him or cry out for attention. She would have gone unnoticed, except when Jesus saw her, he called her over. 
she became more important to him than what he was teaching. Listen carefully to what happens next. Jesus said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then after saying that, Jesus laid his hands on her and she stood up and began praising God. But Jesus' first words are very important. Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Even before she stood up, even before her physical condition changed, even before she was cured, she was healed. She was set free. Was that what was so upsetting to the religious leaders? Note that they don't chastise Jesus. They shouted instead at the crowds, including this woman. After all those years looking at feet, she stood up to see faces contorted with rage. It was enough to make her look down again. But Jesus heard their outburst. He returned to his teaching and began to argue case law like a rabbi. Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger, manger and lead it away to give it water? Ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from her bondage on the Sabbath day? I wonder what she was thinking about while Jesus was talking. Maybe she thought about the Tenth Commandment, where wife and ox and ass appear in the same sentence. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is your neighbor's. When I was in Sunday school, we tried to say the words really fast. When you do that, wife and ox and ass blur together as though they were all a man's property. I have no idea if she thought about such things but she must have been delighted when Jesus called her a daughter of Abraham, a member of the family cherished by God. This was no small thing, for she often felt judged because of her condition, shunned by others even within her own family. Social isolation is too often the reality for people with disabilities including far too many wounded soldiers returning from Iraq and Afghanistan. How can we be communities of healing where people with disabilities are welcome? Every curb cut in the sidewalk is an invitation for someone in a wheelchair to be part of the larger world. In New York City, where I live, I always marvel that people sit patiently, even people in a hurry. People sit on the bus while the driver gets up, lowers the lift, raises it again to bring a person in an electric scooter onto the bus. Hopefully our churches are as welcoming as city buses. People with disabilities can be our best teachers if we're paying attention. I mean to make a map says Nancy Mayers. She's talking about a map to negotiate the unknown territory in front of her and in front of most of us sooner or later. And she goes on, my infinitely harder task is to conceptualize not merely a habitable body, but a habitable world, a world that wants me in it. We pray and work for such a world a world that wants Nancy and other people with disabilities in it. We pray for one another, even as we understand that healing may come when a cure never does. Jesus said, woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Now Jesus calls us to set people free from whatever it is that bends them low.